Hey everybody, how's it going? Alex here, and today we're gonna take a look at ChatGPT's functions. Essentially, we're gonna pick up where we left off in the previous video, where we were exploring how to talk to PDFs, but in this one, we're gonna focus more on how to take any uh, text and extract um, structured responses from a chat completion using make and of course all of this data is going to be stored in Airtable. So without any further ado, let's take a look. All right, so let's take a look at how this whole thing works. I'm just gonna ask a question here. What is the business model of this company? Ask the question. Again, if you don't know how to set this whole thing up, please watch the previous video. Uh, where I explain everything about how to uh, set this process up where you're asking questions, you get answers. But as you can see, my answer is like really, really complicated. But now I get pieces of that answer populating my database as I go along. So for instance, I can ask another question. Is there an email for the founders? And again, usually my answer is going to be typically, you know, elaborate, but I want the system to just populate it as soon as it finds it. And as you, as you can see, the answer is yes, the email for the founder is blah, 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 as mentioned. Uh, but chat GBT extracts that and finds it. And without any extra fluff, just takes that information and and then make, of course, updates the database. Now, there's not much to talk about in terms of database structure, other than compared to the previous video, I've just added one, two, three, four, five fields, just text fields, nothing too fancy. But in our typical fashion, let's go ahead and take a look at how I've set up the make, uh, how I've extended the make um, automation pull of this, all of this clean data in to Airtable. Let's see. All right, guys, so we're back. Now, um, as you can see, this is our previous scenario only with a few extra bits. Let me highlight what those bits are. So if this was our previous scenario, um, the extra bits are located here and beyond this little router that I've just kind of like set up as a mark so to speak, this part over there. Now, I've explained thoroughly how to set this up. Uh, now, let's take a look and see what these little extra parts mean. So, first of all, this part over here, this is the beginning of everything. This is the little array function. Well, this is a little JSON string that I've created please feel free to use the same uh, thing if you want to replicate this example or you want to work on another one uh, but the typical uh, sort of architecture of it is really simple it's an array then within that array we have the name which is the name of the function then there is a description information from the body of the input text for instance then you have parameters the uh, type object and then we start with properties and then we have these little like properties essentially where we have the various properties that I want to extract right so the business model what kind of a type of an answer do I want I want a string to be given back what is the description the description is what is the name of the, of the business model of the company right then I have another one projected revenue what kind of an answer do I want string what is the projected revenue at 1 million users? Contact email. What kind of an answer do I want back? Is there a contact email for the founders? CEO. Who's the CEO founder of the company, for instance? Yeah, all I did was just basically add these little extras over here. And you can say maybe um, founded, uh, or we can call this year founded, for instance when was the company founded or produced its first product. And that's how you basically add an extra parameter to your function. 
So the next thing is to review this part, right? This bit. Now, it's really, really easy. First of all, we have a variable called about the company and we basically bring the data that we extracted over here from chat PDF that responds essentially this long answer that uh, chat PDF gave us. We need to open up a um, make a call module for chat PDF and um, in the URL just type in this thing as you can see it then the method is post leave everything else as is usually this is the same then in the body you have to just input this particular part let me just break this down for you first of all we have the model i'm using chat uh, gpt plus therefore i can use chat gpt4 then set the temperature i've got it set to about 0.2 because i want my answers to be white specific right i don't want it to elaborate almost at all uh, on what I'm trying to do. Then we have the messages. And first of all, we need to set up the system. I mean, this is a bit optional, but yeah, you are a helpful assistant, so you can keep that there. Then a user, and then we get the content about the company, which is our payload that came from chat PDF. Then over here, also add a functions key with and within that, we input the variable as is. You see, I don't have any quote marks or anything like that for uh, custom functions, which was this original thing over here, the variable, the module two, two, three, right in the beginning. And then the next thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that the function call is always that. In other words, uh, typically, uh, if you read the do documentation for this, you'll see that this functions call function call key usually has auto in it. That means that depending on whether or not chat GPT feels like it, it will either use your functions or not use them and just give you a typical prompt completion, which is not what we want. We want it to always give us a prompt, give us always a, a chat, a, like a function, a structured answer. In, in JSON format, essentially. So yeah, this way, when you say uh, not auto, but you just create another uh, key value pair of name and track company info, which is the name of our function, right? The name, extract company info. When you kind of double down essentially on your request um, to run that function, it will always produce a clean JSON payload. The next thing that I'm doing is essentially I'm parsing that JSON. Really easy to do. Just add your data structure, generate, and just pick it up from here once you've just show you to so press add, generate, sample data, and just paste the the first structure as it comes out from uh, chat PDF. I mean, we're gonna see this in action in a sec but it's really easy to generate the uh, data structure uh, automatically. Once you do that, uh, then just map the, the argument from the payload into this JSON string so that then it basically produces a parsed JSON payload. Well, it parses the JSON that ChatGPT gives us. From there, we have four things that are kind of like, we have a router and then we have four different directions. And as you can already maybe imagine, each direction is a filter into, well, if the business model exists, then populate the business model from my document. Well, the business model from my document, from my, um, uh, from my um, uh, record in Airtable. Then if uh, the projected revenue exists, then populate my document with the projected revenue value that you get from the JSON. Same thing goes for uh, the contact email and same thing goes for the CEO. Now let's, uh, and, and I've literally copy pasted this whole thing that I've just explained down into every other direction that we have in, uh, in our automation. Let's see how this works in action. I'm just going to run once and then 
let's ask the question of who are the founders? Ask the question and as it's running, we'll see what it's going to produce. Here we go. Awesome. And you can see it has added that uh, data, Joel Gascon and Leo Will Widrich. Let's see what happened. So our chat completion is done. Choices, collection, message, function call. And you see CEO Joel Gascon, that's it. Perfect. In that case, what you need to do, what I was referring to previously, is you need to take this data, choices, function call, take this argument like this, copy, control C or command C if you're on a Mac, parse JSON, add, generate, paste that in, generate, save, and that's that. That's all you have to do. And then just make sure that in here you open this up, message, function call, arguments. There you go. Arguments, just press that in there and it will always, always, always work. So that's basically it. Uh, I'm just gonna cancel out of that. And yeah, in this case, it has done its job and has given us who the founders are. Let's try it again on this other document, run once. So let's go with um, what is the business model? Ask the question and here we go. And here we go. It's now ready. So monthly subscription per repository, fantastic. But you see the whole answer is really complicated. So yeah, let's uh, do one final example. Who, who are the founders? Let's get this thing to run. Ask the question. There's no information about the founders on the specific pages. And you can see not available. Let's see. Is there... Uh, contact email let's ask that I was probably a little bit too late there on pressing that there we go and as you can see Brian at bliss.ai and if I open of course if I open this up on the first page I think there is that mention there you go and yeah that's basically it hey guys thank you so much for watching uh, this little tutorial on how to set up functions on chat GPT. I'll uh, see you in the next one. Feel free to leave a comment down below with um, maybe ideas of what you would like me to do next. And uh, yeah, hope everybody has a great rest of the week. Cheers.